Hello everybody, my name is Ratnus, and welcome to my Mythic Smolderon guide. So, this encounter has a little bit of cringe going on with the Mythic mechanic. There's some macro nonsense that you're going to need to set up if you want to handle it this way. Uh, but otherwise, it's very similar to Heroic. So, first off, we have players getting targeted by Overheated. That's going to be half the raid. Uh, and the other half of the raid needs to come into the tank soak here, or else you're going to miss out a lot of damage during the uh, intermissions. The players that have Overheated, though, are going to be shooting out five fire wa waves uh, out from where they go. So you want to have those players kind of spread, and ideally you don't want any ranged to be near boss because you want melee to be able to take those spots near boss. Um, whichever tank doesn't get affected by, or does get affected by overheated, also is, wants to be near boss because they want to be able to taunt immediately afterwards. Uh, and then everybody who does do the soak is going to drop behind a little circle that does damage once they finish getting their healing absorbed that is left behind by that healed off. So you kind of want to try and move slowly as a group so that you're not going to be spreading those all over the place. Uh, and that does mean that you're going to have to get out of wherever you did that soak. It's like a three second delay until it explodes. So you do want to start moving, but slowly, uh, pretty quick after that. So uh, the tank also wants to run far away there. And what we were doing is whichever tank got that first slam was always using Wernstone. So if you look at our mini map here, uh, actually, maybe not this time, but I was always using Wernstone whenever I got that one so that I could get back and we could bait these Lava Geysers all by the door. The first set of Lava Geysers, very easy to bait. And then future ones, you kind of want to always bait by your old Lava Geysers if you can. But the cast sequence changes in each of these phases a little bit, such that the first one is uh, slow. It's like a long time after the overheated circles expire. And the later ones are fast. So you kind of have to be a little bit less... A little bit more YOLO with the later ones, and then try and conserve space and backfill with the earlier ones uh, to be more effective. Now, here's the Mythic Mechanic. And the way this Mythic Mechanic works is that four orbs will spawn, and they'll fixate four players. And they, it's a private aura, so your weak auras can't tell who's affected by it. So, you need to get a macro that talks to a weak aura that then creates a list of those players in order of pressing the macro. And then you need somebody to call out... Uh, those names or just have people go once this vulnerable goes away because if you have two soak within that vulnerable window uh, You're gonna explode. So for us here for instance uh, We got this you, this weak or that we have is, is a publicly available one by the time you're watching this There may be liquid and echo ones out that may be slightly better But the general functionality is very limited on this It does require everybody to press the macro if somebody who isn't targeted presses the macro It's gonna mess up the macro. You're gonna have to do a lot of adjusting uh, but you want to have one of these get soaked pretty quick here so we have our people press, and then our first person soak, and then as soon as that vulnerability debuff is off, our second person's gonna go and soak theirs, and then third, and then fourth, and uh, if you're targeted by one of these, you have to sometimes plan ahead your movement, especially if you're four and you needed to soak this tank slam, you'd wanna make sure that you kite it in a nice wide arc so that the ball wouldn't be going through you and, uh, and making it impossible to both soak and avoid it for a while. Um, so yeah, here we now have the next Searing Aftermath, which again, this is just after the tank soak. Uh, the tank has a fall off damage thing, so you just run away and then I, I Wernstone back in uh, after that. Wernstone two minute cooldown, so uh, not something you can do every phase, but you can do it like two or three phases depending on which ones you get targeted. We enter the first intermission here, which uh, this one is a good one to pot because you can pot the first and the fourth. And you want to less the third uh, typically because that one is one where people get a lot of uptime. Uh, and you need to collect all five of your orbs. You won't see the orbs if you didn't soak the tank slam. Uh, you won't get any orbs, but those orbs give you 100% increased damage and 50% increased healing. You need to get all five. If you don't get all five, the boss is going to get them, and each one the boss gets gives him 5% damage for the rest of the fight. So it's not like a wipe if one goes in, but it's very, very bad. It's one of those things where like you need to clamp down on that if that's happening in your raid. Uh, you got to prevent people from doing that. Um, so out of that first intermission, 72% is very low. 75% even is good uh, out of that first intermission. Uh, and then we're just kind of repeating this process. The boss is always being brought near the old fire and aimed backwards, and the tank slam is being done pretty much on the old fire. Uh, and then the tank is running back through the old fire, and the, the people that were targeted by it are running forwards. And uh, we have kind of an alleyway created by them. We have a rule where if you have overheated, you can't go in front of the boss, right, relative to where those people doing the soak are, because they need that kind of alleyway clear. So the left side of the boss, right, like this outer ring is a place you can go with overheated. The inner ring is a place you can go with overheated. But in front of the boss relative to the fire, not allowed. That's a uh, important safe alleyway. Uh, then the tank here, whichever tank does ha get the second overheated, just taunts off the first tank after that slam. And 
you can stand in the fire if you're a tank as well. Doesn't matter. If you're Blood Decay, I mean, if you're Blood Decay, you can do whatever you want in this fight. Um, and again, you have another set of macros. And this is now the second World in Flames cast. Uh, so this one and the fourth one, the second and the fourth, both feature Warlock Gateways. I don't have a weak aura that does the numbers or anything. There are a bunch of good weak auras, though. And more as, you know, the Race World First guilds make their weak auras public later down the line. But uh, there will be you can get a weak aura that will tell you which which rings are safe and which ones are dangerous. Um, as a Blood Decay, you can just get hit as well. It doesn't matter. Uh, there's just basically nothing that can kill you here. You can see me. I AMS this one. You don't have to. You can just get hit by it. But uh, that was the gateway one. And then you gateway, and then you have to run back in quickly. So we also use Windrush there. Stampeding Roar is good too. Uh, movement cooldown so that people can move in quickly. Evokers Rescuing Priests is a nice combo as well. Similar to Razageth. Uh, that's nice. Uh, and each time the boss does an intermission, it's gaining 10% increased damage as well, so uh, things are getting sketchier. A thing you have to be careful of as the Blood Decay uh, is that when you do this soak, you get a big healing absorb on you, but if you instantly death strike, you will instantly drop one of these circles under the raid, which is bad. So I always stutter step out, except for the times I forgot during progression and killed people, always stutter step out and then death strike like right as I'm getting out of melee range to try and make this circle not somewhere that's going to kill everybody, like right in the middle of that tank soak. Um, then here, I'm st I'm not actually entirely sure how I died. This Searing Aftermath did like way more damage than it usually does. I think it's because I was out in the fire. I think that does something bad. I'm not 100% sure. I was kind of confused by that, but uh, as well as is tradition, you die to something new and then end up killing the boss on that pull anyway, so uh, that was a funny funny little moment there. Not so It killed uh, like... I don't know. Anyways, um, tank slams, great spot for, for raid cooldowns, stuff like AMZ, stuff like darkness. Um, as we approach the third of these World in Flames, this is the spot where you want to hold two minutes. So two minutes can go on pull at around two minutes, and then here on the third World in Flames. Um, or you could just use them on the first World in Flames and the third World in Flames, depending, uh, because, of course, 100% damage amp is a lot. Um, either of those is probably fine. Uh, and then, yeah, boss is about to enter execute range here during this one. So you can see this one is a bit weird. This third world in flames is faster cadence of these circles exploding than the other ones. But you can just go one, two, one, two, one, two, or like three, two, three, two, three, two relative to the boss for most of those uh, combos. So it's a very high uptime world in flames, uh, which makes it one of the best targets for the bloodlust, all your cooldowns. Uh, kill the boss, and once you're out of this, now you're in the final main phase of the fight, and you want to kind of look at your room, and you can see here we've got so much space. This is really good. Anytime you have this, this level of space, you know, you can't really go wrong. Um, but if you have less, you kind of just want to identify a line from the middle of the room to the outside of the room that is currently not covered in fire, and then don't fill it with fire. And anybody who's dropping these lava geysers can go anywhere else, except for whatever line you're trying to keep clear, because you do need a full line of, of empty space from the middle of the room to an edge of the room that people can play in during the final world in flames and during the uh, encroaching destruction at the very end, because otherwise you're going to... There's another gateway in that set that, you know, if you're gating through fire or running through fire, people are going to be dying uh, during that one. So that's another important... Uh, Important thing to note here, you can see these last lava geysers again, faded really nicely. We've got just tremendous amounts of uh, of extra room on this one. This uh, this pull was was very clean on that front. Uh, and you can see here, so this, I'll show you why you need this much, or you need some, some free space, but it can be a very narrow channel to the outside of the room. Uh, and second pots come up now, so uh, you can remember to use those. And then again, pick up all five of your orbs, always pick up all five. Once you pick up one, you don't extend the timer by picking up more, so you should just grab all five uh, as soon as reasonably possible. I mean, don't go too far out of your way, too. Uh, and then this World in Flames, again, has a gateway set that comes in here, so uh, everybody gateways out. I, even me, because I'm, I'm trying to save my AMS to live the final enrage. Gateway out, run back in, and if that is through fire, I mean, you can see even without fire, I guess we're a couple healers down, but people are dying uh, to this. And then the boss does the enrage here, where the rings are going to come in from the edge. And if the boss is like 5% or less here, your tanks can solo this for a while at the end, depending on what specs they're playing. Uh, that is all there is to it, though. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, probably a little while until the Tindril one comes out, based on how that fight is so far. Um, and yeah, see you in the next one. Bye.